Hi, welcome to Math Defined with me, Mrs. C. And today I'm going to talk to you about stem and leaf plots. So in my video today, you can expect to see an example of what a stem and leaf plot is. And you're going to expect to see a real world example where we create our own stem and leaf plot using the information that was collected from a survey. Please don't forget to remember to become a subscriber today if you haven't done so already. If you'd like to know when my videos come out, make sure you do click that notification bell so you don't miss any of the new videos. I make new videos all the time. And if you like those videos, please be sure that you do click that like button and let me know that you like it. If you have any questions or if you have any topics that you would like me to do videos on, please leave that information below in the comments section and I will be sure to reply. So let's get started. So stem and leaf plots are just a graph that organizes data by using the place values of the numbers. And data is just information that you have collected. So my numbers that I'm going to start with to show you what a stem and leaf plot is, I'm going to use the numbers 10, 11, 14, 31, and 33. So a stem and leaf plot organizes your numbers in order from least to greatest. So the first thing you want to do is when you're given a list of numbers, you want to put them in order from least to greatest first. And here it is already in that order. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and draw a t-chart because a stem and leaf plot is graphed by using a t-chart. So you draw the vertical line down, the horizontal line across, and on the left side, you're going to write stem and on the right side you're going to put leaf. So the stem and the leaf is all that's doing is, is it's giving you this vertical line that is just separating your place values. So if you look at my numbers you're going to see that I have the number 10, 11, and 14. And all, all three of those numbers are in the teens so to speak, meaning that they have a 1 in the tens place. So my stem in this case is going to represent the tens place and my leaf is going to represent the ones place. So let me show you with a little visual here. So if I take my number 10 and I draw a vertical line separating the ones place from the tens place, I'm hoping that you can see that that's a little visual clue that tells you that the one is going to be my stem and the zero is going to be my leaf. And that's going to be the same for number 11 and number 14. Then when I get to my next number of 31, instead of having a 1 in the tens place, I have a 3 in the tens place. And my 1 will be in the ones place, which will be my leaf. And then the same for 33. So the 3 in the tens place will be my stem, and the 3 in the ones place will be my leaf. All right, so now I'm going to show you how you take that information and put it onto the stem and leaf plot. So again, my stem and leaf plot is going to be separating the tens and the ones. So I have three numbers with a one in the tens place. So I'm going to put that in my stem. And I'm going to go ahead and complete all of my stems first before I do my leaves. So one thing with the stems is they get, you count, you put them in counting order, starting at the top. So you'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, until you can reach the end of your numbers. So my numbers end from numbers in the in the tens place in the ones to the threes. So my stems are going to read one, two, and three because I don't have any numbers after the thirties. Okay, so now that I have my stems done, now I'm going to do my leaves. So I'm going to go back and look at that number 10. So the number 10, the one is in the tens place and the zero is in the ones place. And that's what goes in the leaf column of the stem and leaf plot. So when you see that one in the stem, and the zero in the leaf, that means that that is the number 10. Same for 11. 11 has a one in the tens place, but it has a one in the ones place. So that second one in the leaf, you would read that number as number 11. And then we come to 14, which again has the one in the tens place and a four in the ones place. So in my stem and leaf plot, on my leaf column, I see those three numbers, 10, 11, and 14. Now when I go back to my looking at the numbers that I have, have written down here, I don't have any numbers in the 20s. So I'm not going to put anything in the leaf section. I'm just going to leave it blank. Then I have two numbers that are in the 30s. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 in the leaf column because that's going to represent the 1's place. And then I'm going to put a 3. 
And that's all there is to it because the stem and leaf plot just takes your information and it organizes it horizontally from least to greatest. So in your leaves, you have to be really careful that you do put them in order from least to greatest and it organizes them vertically from least to greatest as well. And that's basically what a stem and leaf plot does. Now there's one other thing that's really important to remember that you have to have with a stem and leaf plot and that is a key. And a key looks like this. So I take a number that's in my information. So I have the number 14 and in my key, I'm going to go ahead and put a one with a vertical line separating the one and the four. And I'm going to write down that that equals 14. And that's basically telling the reader that when you see it written like this in the stem and leaf plot, that that is the number 14. And so it's telling you the stem is the tens place and the leaf is the ones place. Really important, you're going to see a little bit later on in the video, I'm going to show you how to use larger numbers in a stem and leaf plot as well as decimal numbers in a stem and leaf plot. And you're going to see when you have numbers like that, how important that key is for your reader to understand how to understand what these values are in the stem and leaf plot. So let's go ahead and look at our real world problem. And this is a problem where I went to my favorite ice cream store and I collected some data on the ages of the people that were getting ice cream. So I just saw people and I randomly wrote down the ages of the people that were getting ice cream. So I have all sorts of numbers in random order. Three, three years old, 28 years old, 14 years old, six years old, 48 years old, and so on. When you look at information like that, it's really hard to make sense of that information because it's not in any kind of order. It's not organized. And that's what a stem and leaf plot does. It helps you to organize the information so that you can understand more clearly what were the typical ages of the people going to this ice cream shop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to list those numbers in order from least to greatest. And I'm going to do it in a kind of a probably a way that looks a little bit different to you, but it's going to make creating the stem and leaf plot a whole lot easier in the end. So just bear with me, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and look at my big list of numbers. And I see that in my big list of numbers, I have the numbers 3, 5, 5, and 6. And those are all single digit numbers. So I go ahead and I write those down in the first row. And of course, I'm going to cross them off. Then I'm going to look for numbers that come after 6. And so I see the numbers 11, 12, 14, 14, and 16. And those are two digit numbers. So I'm going to write those underneath my 3, 5, 5, and 6. All right. So then I go and I start looking and I say, well, after 16, I see the number 20 and then 23, 25, and 28. And so since those numbers are in the 20s, I'm going to go to a third row and I'm going to go ahead and write the 20s there. And I'm hoping that you're starting to remember from what I just showed you on the previous slide why I'm doing this. Okay. Then I go ahead and I look for numbers that are in the 30s. So I had 35, 36, and 37. And then into the 40s. So I had three numbers in the 40s. And then I start looking for numbers in the 50s. And I didn't see any in the 50s. So I'm going to go on to the 60s. And I had three numbers in the 60s. So now what I've done is I've just taken my information and I've just put it in order from least to greatest and I put them in rows. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my stem and leaf plot next. So I draw a vertical line, horizontal, stem on the left, leaf on the right. And basically most of my numbers are all two digit numbers. So I can see that here. And so I have numbers that start at three and then I have numbers in the teens and then 20s and 30s and 40s and 60s. So that's going to represent my stem. So my single digit numbers have a zero in the tens place. Then my teens would have a one in the tens place. And then I see 20s, 30s and 40s. And even though I don't have anything in the 50s, I can't skip that number and just put a six. So I'm going to go ahead and put a five there. And my largest numbers are in the sixes. So my stems are going to range from zero to six. Now I'm ready to put my leaves on. So I'm going to go back up to my top row. And my first number is a three. So I'm going to go ahead and put a three down. So if I, I can write the number three with a zero in the tens place and a three in the ones place. And that value is three. It looks a little bit silly, but I can do that. So I'm hoping that you see that that really is the value of just three. Then I go ahead and put down my five. 
five years old, and then six year olds. Then I go to my next row with 11, 12, 14, and 16. So I go ahead and put my one for 11, my two for 12, and I do have two people that are 14, so I'm gonna put four down twice, and then a 16 year old. In my 20s, I had a 20 year old, a 23 year old, 25 year old, and a 28 year old. And in my 30s, I had a 35 year old and a 36 and 37 year old. In my 40s, I had a 41 year old, 43 and 48 year old. I didn't have anyone in their 50s, so I'm just gonna skip the five. And then I had three people in their 60s, a 60 year old, a 62 year old, and a 69 year old. So now I have taken all the information that I collected and I have put it into this stem and leaf plot. Now I need to make a key so that my reader understands what are they looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and make my key and I'm going to pick a number that's in my stem and leaf plot. And I just went ahead and picked 14. So I put a 1 with a vertical line separating the 1 and the 4. I put an equal sign and I put the number 14. But this time, because it's coming from a real world problem, I want to tell my reader what are these numbers representing. And so they're representing ages. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this one with the vertical line separating the one and the four represents a person who is 14 years old. So now that I've created my stem and leaf graph or plot, I can now easily answer some questions about it. So the first question I might have is, how old was the youngest customer that I saw getting an ice cream? And so remember, the stem and leaf plot organizes the information horizontally and vertically from least to greatest. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the top left of my leaf section, and I see the number three. So I know that my youngest customer was three years old. I can also answer the question of how old was the oldest customer? So again, I know that that's going to be all the way to the bottom right of my leaf section. I see a 9 there, but I know that that person wasn't 9 years old because in the stem there's a 6. So I know that the oldest person was 69 years old. Then I could also answer the question of how many customers were in their 50s? So I look at it and I don't see any values in the leaf section after the 5. So I know that there were no customers in their 50s. I can also answer the question about, well, how many customers were younger than 20? So I'm not going to count someone who is 20. They have to be younger than 20. So when I go and I look at my leaf section, I know that that's going to encompass all of these numbers that I've circled on the leaf side. And if you count them, there are nine. So there were nine customers that were younger than 20. And then I might be wondering, well, how many customers did I survey in all? Well, all of the customers' ages that I surveyed are represented right here on the leaf column of the stem and leaf plot. So all I have to do is count all of the leaves that are there, and I count that there are 22, so that means that I surveyed 22 customers in all. So then you might be wondering, well, now that I know how to plot two-digit numbers, is it possible to plot numbers with three digits or four digits? And the answer to that is yes. So if I take this series of numbers here from 96 to 139, you're going to see just how easy it is to put those into a stem and leaf plot. And I've went ahead and put those numbers in order from least to greatest already so that we, do, we can kind of skip that step right here. So let's go ahead and draw our stem and leaf plot, put our stem, put our leaf. And I'm going to look at it and remember that vertical line that separates the stem and the leaf is actually separating the digits. You're putting the ones place from all the other digits in the number. So if I go ahead and do that, say for 96, I can see that the six is in the ones place and the nine is in the tens place. And when you have the leaf side column of the stem and leaf plot, the leaves can only be single digit numbers. So you can always take your vertical line and just kind of Draw a line separating the last digit of the number from all the other digits that are in the number. So I look at it, and I look at my next number. Okay, so I had that 9 there. So I know that the 9 is going to be that stem. And I know that the 6 is going to be my leaf because now that's the number 96. So if I look at the next number, that's 99. So that also has a 9 for the stem and a 9 for the leaf. 
Now I go ahead and I look at my next number, which is 108. And I'm going to go ahead and put that vertical line separating the ones place from all the other digits places in that number. So when I separate it, it looks like I have a 10 and then I have an 8. And that's exactly how I'm going to do it on my stem and leaf plot. So I'm going to go ahead and have a 10 here, and that's what I'm going to put in my stem. And then on the leaf, I'm going to have an 8. Now, from here, I already know what the next stem needs to be, because remember, you have to do it in counting order. So I'm going to go ahead and put an 11 here, because after the number 10 comes the number 11. Then I'm going to go back and look at my numbers, and do I have any numbers that would have a stem of 11? And I do, because I have 115. So here's my 11. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 5 on the leaf section. And then I look at my next number, which is 117. And again, there's an 11 for the stem and a 7 for the leaf. Now I already know my next number is 130. Well, I can't just skip the number 13. I have to put the number 12 next. And even though I don't have anything in the 120s, it's okay. I just leave it blank and I go to the number 13. So now I have 130. So I know that 13 is in my stem, zero is in my leaf. I look at my next number, it's 133. So I go ahead and put that three in the ones place in the leaf column. And then I have 139 and I go ahead and put that nine. And I'm all done. So do you see how my stem can have single and double digits, but my leaf can only have single digits. And this is where a key is really important. So I'm gonna put my key and I'm not gonna use a two digit number for my key because most of my digits, most of my numbers are three digit numbers. So I just chose 108. So I put a vertical line separating the 10 and the 8, and I put equals 108. But what about decimal numbers? What would you do if you had information, you had numbers that were in decimal number form? Can you put those on a stem and leaf plot? And yes, you can. You would do the exact same strategy with drawing that vertical line and you know, to the right is going to be the leaf and to the left is going to be the stem. So let's go ahead and draw that. And let's go ahead and look at my first number, which is 5.6. So if I just draw a line separating the last digit from all, you know, on the right to all the other digits to the left, I have a 5.6. So what that means is, is that 5 is going to be my stem and the 6 is going to be my leaf. But I'm not going to look at this number as 56. I'm going to look at it as 5.6. So in this case, my leaves are going to represent decimal numbers, not the ones place. So let's go ahead and look at my next number, which is a 5.8. So again, my 5 is the stem. My 8 will be the leaf. Now I already know what my next stem is going to need to be. It's going to need to be a 6 because you have to go in counting order. And if I look at my next number, I do have a 6.2. So the 6 is the leaf. I'm sorry, the 6 is the stem and the 2 is the leaf. Then I know that my stem is going to be 7 next. And when I'm looking at my numbers, I do have a 7.8. So 7 is my stem, 8 is my leaf. And then I have another 7.8. So I'm going to go ahead and put another 8 in my leaf section. And on this one, doing a key is really important because someone might look at that and think, oh, that's 56 and 58, but it's not. Remember, our leaves are representing the tenths place, not the ones place. So in my key, I did a 5 with a um, vertical line separating the 5 and the 8, and I wrote that it equals 5.8. And that's how you deal with decimal numbers. All right, so... I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you need more help with other topics, be sure that you do check out my YouTube channel, Math Defined. I do have lots and lots of videos and I continue to make more videos every day. And if you haven't done so already, please do become a subscriber today. Click that notification bell and you'll know when I have new videos coming on out. So until I see you next time, thank you so much for watching.